Welcome to another scriptural study. As this short but very conclusive scriptural, historical, and astronomical study will share only some of the scriptural, historical, and astronomical details about the 360-day calendar deception that has already deceived countless of folks still imprisoned in world religions especially those still suffering from the effects of Mystery Babylon. Yes, known by the few as the Second Babylon, the mother of all worldwide religious organizations. Recognized as well today as the non-scriptural principality of Christianity, who erroneously think they have the self-proclaimed authority to change appointed times and law with all of her offspring that regrettably are either consciously and or unconsciously guardians of the Gregorian still to this very day in some manifestation of their own aspirations, which we will astronomically or astronomically explain in this study. But before we proceed, and as always, please ensure you stop the video at any time in order to fully read the scriptural witnesses being shared, let alone to focus on the astronomical empirical facts, and of course, with your computer, mobile, and or iPad screens configured to full screen mode. Now, on to this latest scriptural study titled The 360 Calendar Day Deception. Because really, what is the deception here? Furthermore, what is this hoax that exists in plain sight? Yes, what is it about this beast that tricks everyone into believing or accepting that the false non-scriptural Gregorian calendar is genuine? And how could everyone in this world be so easily misled with something that is so preposterous? Because... Isn't it true that Rome, the second Babylon, with this woman who rides the beast, is indeed the mother of all manifestation movements on this earth, as she has literally manifested out of thin air an aspirational solar-based only calendar, which is totally non-scriptural? Because realistically, isn't it true that anyone can prove that it is an empirical and astronomical fact that the mother of all manifestation movements fully rejects, yes, ignores the very first page of scripture that states that the sun, moon, and stars, yes, all three witnesses of light, were created for days, years, and appointed times? Yes, indeed. The mother of all manifestation movements continues to serve her purpose of making her aspirational thoughts in this world real. Tricking the masses into believing the hoax. Yes, the preposterous one-witness approach with a non-scripture, solar-based only calendar. Known today as the Gregorian, and as we have shared on this YouTube channel for many years, Are any of us truly obligated to follow a Nimrod? Really? So, as an example, the Emperor Caligula brought a great stone obelisk from Egypt to the Circus Nero in Rome. It was a 327-ton monolith, 83 feet long. And 1,500 years later, in eight. In 1586, it lay half buried in dirt not far from the Vatican. A few years before, supposedly as the historical record highlights, Pope Sixtus V had told the young architect Domenico Fontaine that too many people have been martyred in the shadow of that stone. The emissary Kefa, known today as St. Peter, himself is said to have died there. But Pope Sixtus ordered the obelisk to be moved to the piazza, anyway, where St. Peter's Basilica was being erected, literally. So, why is this so preposterous? Well, if we get into the scriptures, we will notice that Rome, 
the second Babylon, is known as the House of the Sun, just like Egypt was. And allow me to quote Yirmiyahu the prophet, chapter 43, verse 13. And he shall break the stone pillars of the house of the sun, which are in the land of Egypt, Mitzrayim. And he shall burn the houses of the mighty ones of the Mitzrites with fire. And as we know, the prophet Yahazekiel in chapter 29, verse 19 stated, Therefore, thus said the master Yahuwah, See, I'm giving the land of Egypt, Mitzrayim, to Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel. And this has happened to this very day with solar only worship systems. The Gregorian is a solar calendar only system. And again, as Daniel had stated in chapter 7, verse 25, it's these folks that have spurned the aspirations of many to think that they have the self proclaimed right to change appointed times and law. So, this is what is preposterous. Yes, Rome is literally the house of the sun. Are we not to tear down the pillars? Again, the very first page of scripture is clear. If we number our days correctly, we're using all three witnesses of light, with the sun, moon, and stars, plural, as well. There are four night watches over and above the daytime period, and thus why the psalmist had stated that the heavens are proclaiming the esteem of the Almighty Yahuwah, the only self-existent one, because day to day, in that expanse, pours forth speech and night to night reveals knowledge. Remember, timekeeping is nothing more than the action or process of recording how long something takes. Again, this is why our witnesses, sorry, Yahuwah's witnesses are wonders and why our being observes them. It's that simple. And all of this with the sun, moon, and stars is aligned to Moshe's writings and is well linked to the sun, moon, and stars and their movements linked to the agricultural cycle, which we're experiencing here in this time period of booths here and now, Sukkot, all the way up to the last great day, the 22nd day of the seventh month. We covered this for many years on this YouTube channel, especially with this video that we did almost seven years ago now, Why Saturday is Not the Sabbath. Are you a guardian of the Gregorian? So again, a very challenging system to come out of, and we'll explain why, that the many are still tied to it in some shape, form, or manner. Again, what is preposterous about the second Babylon, Rome? It is the house of the sun, and it trains people to not utilize all three witnesses of light, with the sun, moon, and stars. So let's get into this, because... The proof is Rome intercalates. They add a day every four years into the calendar. Why do they do this? Well, as Hanok stated, the solar year is 365 and a quarter or 0.25 days annually. These folks are forced to intercalate because they don't use the sun, moon, and stars to tell time. And thus they're forced to add a day every four years to stay in alignment with what the Father of Lights, Yahuwah, provides to tell time. So again, when you add or take away in biology, this is known as the practice of intercalation. So if you understand the term gain of function and you understand what had happened in the research uh, as it relates to the Wuhan lab with COVID, they were adding and taking away from various DNA strands with various different types of viruses. You're not supposed to do that, either in biology and or the heavens as it relates to calendation. This is what is preposterous and this is what it means in regards to the deception because it creates chaos. So where does that chaos exist? Well, it exists with the manifest movements that this mother has influenced everyone to do. So again, there's no such thing as a 365 day calendar only. The sun has a system of 365.25. The Zadok calendars, there are so many of them, they go off 364 and 
there's a big argument with them because they're based in 360 day only methodologies from Egypt. So again, are we not to come out of Egypt? Are we not to come out of Babylon? So these are not scriptural as well. They're just manifestations of the beast. And finally, something known as the Hijri calendar in this day and age is a 354 day only calendar. This is non-scriptural as well. Again, all three witnesses of light, like a wristwatch. You utilize all three witnesses, the second, the minute, and the hour hand. But in these cases, they add and take away. They intercalate. And that's what this scriptural study is going to be about. So as an example, the Egyptian calendar had a 10-day week. And was it truly a 360-day only calendar? Because what is preposterous is many people have been duped to believe the hoax and the deception that in ancient times, the sun, moon, and stars only produced 360 days annually. Well, let's explore this right now to see if that is true. Because the Egyptian calendar, as an example, like all other ancient calendars, um, were not 360 days only. So let's talk about the Egyptian calendar. The year consisted of three seasons of 120 days each, plus an intercalary month of five epigominal days, treated as outside of the year proper. Each season was divided into four months of 30 days. Each month was divided into three day periods known as decans or decades as we know today. And any simple research will reveal this. Furthermore, the ancient Egyptians originally employed a calendar based upon the moon. And like many people throughout the world, they regulated their lunar calendar by means of the guidance of a side reel calendar. They used the seasonal appearance of the star, Sirius, known anciently as Sothis, and this corresponded closely to the true solar year being only 12 minutes shorter. Moving forward, certain difficulties arose. However, because of the inherent incompatibility of lunar and solar years. To solve this problem, the Egyptians invented a schematized or schem uh, schematic civil year of 365 days divided into three seasons. Now listen to this, each of which consisted of four months of 30 days each. To complete the year though, five intercalary days were added at its end, so that the 12 months were equal to 360 days plus five extra days. But because the solar year was still 365.25 back then, they still ran into trouble. Study every ancient calendar because they practiced intercalation. This is the beast in action, the harlot, telling people that they can change appointed times and law, ignoring the very first page of scripture. So this is from the Encyclopedia Britannica. Again, just do your research. It's very easy that the mother of all manifestation movements is still influencing people under the house of the sun principles to this very day. Preposterous indeed. So this carries on all the way into this very day and age, even with a website or YouTube channel called The God Culture. And they say the original calendar was 360 days and then they go into the 364 day time period. This is what they do. Now think about this, the God culture. The name in itself is not correct. The title itself is not correct. And then when you get into it, they state that the weekly Sabbath begins Saturday at sunrise to Sunday just before sunrise when Messiah rose on Sunday. These folks are still tied to the house of the sun. They're solar based only. They don't use the very first page of scripture with the sun, moon and stars. And as such, they also erroneously think they can change appointed times and law. Now, we on this YouTube channel and me personally are not picking on this website. We're not judging them. The journey out of coming out of this world is hard pressed. And everyone wants to simplify, make it simple. Well, here they are still on the Gregorian system. They have not removed themselves from the world. 
still doing um, Saturday <laughs> Sabbaths. It's crazy. But this is what is preposterous. The hoax. They try to trick people into believing and accepting that the Gregorian is still genuine when in fact it's false. It's preposterous. It does not align with the very first page of, page of scripture. It doesn't align with Moses' writings. It doesn't align with the sun, moon, and stars in regards to numbering our days to tell time. It's that simple. This is not complicated. So as an example, just type in 364 Zadok Enoch calendars, let alone 360 Zadok Enoch calendars. And you'll get all of this. The perfect Zadokite 364 day festival calendar. And it'll have a different day in regards to what they're suggesting to worship. And then you got this one here, and then you got the 364 one here. You haven't got this one right here, this one here, and they're all different. And if you keep going, they argue amongst each other how this actually works. I was brought into this uh, diagram right here with an individual well over 15 years ago now when we studied this out. And you'll notice that it's based on a 360 day calendar and they intercalate, they add one day every three months. But again, if you're only 364, uh, you're off. You have to intercalate by a day and a quarter every year or you will not be aligned to the agricultural cycle in a very short period of years. So. Again, they are all ignoring the very first page of Scripture. So take your time to do this. Now take a look at the arguments. Here's one from one individual. They're saying the false 364-day calendar. Well, they're all incorrect. Again, you don't use a wristwatch with just a minute hand and or a second hand alone. You use all three witnesses that measure different units of time, but when combined... Allow you, allow you to meet your scheduled appointment. So again, huge arguments. And this is what happens when you intercalate. So in most cases, most of these are only solar based only. And in some cases, they are lunar and solar based, but don't use the stars. So this is where the chaos will continue to exist. One final point. And here it is. The point about the argument that the Sabbath is based on a solar-only view is non-scriptural. Again, sun, moon, and stars. And notice how the blind is leading the blind here. The argument that it's a solar Sabbath versus a lunar Sabbath. There's no such thing as a lunar Sabbath. When you number your days as the very first page of Scripture, it is supposed to be the sun, moon, and stars all three witnesses of light to tell time. And you'll notice in these debates, prophetically, they come up with these erroneous and preposterous proposals that all come and go. And the 360 mindset produces these crazy, non-scriptural, prophetic, or what I would call, partial prophetic timelines. So again, we are not judging anyone on this YouTube channel, because... If you believe and trust in Yahuwah with all your heart, all your mind, all your being, you will utilize the sun, moon, and stars for your days and years, your appointed times, let alone signs. And it is intercalation free. No human being has the right to add and or take away days. This timing piece is managed by Yahuwah, our Father of Lights, the only self-existent one. That's all we're saying. It's intercalation free. And we know this because here we are in Sukkot, and we know when the days of feasting will go around. We know how Ursa Major goes around the fixed North Star Polaris in a counterclockwise motion in 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.09 seconds every day. And in a 365.25 day year, that produces 364 days of time, along with the moon having its own unit of measurement at 354 days. It's perfect. And we know a day starts when the morning dawns, shakar. And that's why Joe even rose uh, early in the morning, bokar, and offered burnt offerings. 
even Yonah, the sign of Yonah, Jonah. But as morning dawned, Shekar the next day. So these things are very simple. And why those that are amazed at the wonderful witnesses, those perfect witnesses that Yahuwah provides, rise before the dawn and Shua and cry out for help. Because we allow Scripture to be interpreted by Scripture, to be interpreted by all of the witnesses of light that exist in the heavens, in the Shemaim. So again, we're not critiquing anybody. We went through all of those same challenges when we intercalated. We always found debates and arguments. We can't find any more now in regards to using all the sun uh, witnesses that it provides, the moon and the stars. It becomes very basic. And thus why, in the book of Jubilees, chapter 6, verse 23, you learn about the four divisions of the year that were a testimony forever and why the sun, moon, and stars produces the first day of the first month after the spring equinox. The spring equinox, yes, is a marker, but it is not the marker of the first day of the first month. So all of you that have still been influenced by the hoax, whether you're 360 or 364, this calendar does not start on the spring equinox. Because if it did, none of the agricultural harvest cycle would align with the sun, moon, and stars. So again, the sun, moon, and stars produce the spiritual harvest cycle, which is aligned to creation's agricultural harvest cycle. And that's why these days of remembrance, we are not to forget. They fall perfectly in line. And this is how the sun and stars keep the year intact in a 365.25 solar day annual year. It's basic, very basic, if you trust Yahuwah. But if you trust the aspirations from the manifestations of the movements uh, that exist from the beast, then you're not going to believe every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no change nor shadow of turning. Now remember, 360 calendar only people believe that it was either in the past a 360 system and or sometime in the future it's going to be a 360 system. But again, these laws that you see here were forever. So again, Hanok stated it quite clearly that the solar sun on its own had a cycle of 365.25 days and that the sun and stars, as we just talked about Ursa Major going around the North Star Polaris, produced 60, uh, 364 days. And then as he had stated, the moon cycle is 354 days. When combined, like a wristwatch, produce our ability to meet the appointed times, on time, all the time. Yes, Yahuwah's witnesses are wonders, and that's why our being observes them, because we believe every good gift and every perfect gift is coming uh, from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change or shadow of turning. So Yahuwah didn't change his timing piece, but some people say, forget about it. Don't believe all of this stuff with four night watches let alone the fact that day-to-day -day ports for a speech and night-to-night -night reveals knowledge. Think about it this way. When you read the definition of timekeeping, which is the action or process of recording how long something takes, all you're doing is, is you're doing the math. Because Yahuwah, our Father of Lights, the only self-existent one, is an almighty one of order. So the sun has laws, and it sticks to them. It has instructions on how to operate. So does the moon, so does the stars. Think of it this way with a car. So, motion problems in regards to understanding the formula. Well, D stands for distance. The R stands for rate or speed. And the T stands for time. So if the rate, speed, is 60 miles per hour, and the time is 3 hours, what is the distance? 180 miles. If the distance is 300 miles and it took four hours, what was the rate of speed? 75 miles per hour. And on and on it goes. You could also use the formula in timekeeping in this manner. Speed equals distance over time. So if a car traveled 40 miles in 30 minutes, how fast did it travel? 80 miles per hour. 
So this formula exists for the sun, moon, and stars. And this is why we can forecast in advance and why we know when sunrise is going to be tomorrow. Let alone on November 8th, that pagan day, we are going to have another total lunar eclipse in the pagan year 2022. And we know this well in advance because we know the math because Yahuwah is an almighty one of order. Now, we don't force this upon anyone. We don't judge anyone. But again, believe the math at the end of the day. It's that basic. This is not rocket science. And we can then apply it to the face of the earth from looking down from above or looking up to the heavens. This clock is just that on the face of the earth. And you can measure it in so many ways. But many will ignore this, regrettably. Again, let's do the math. Yahuwah is an almighty one of order. It's a piece of cake, so to speak. The heavens are proclaiming the esteem of the Almighty One and the expanse is declaring the work of His hand. Day to day pours forth speech and night to night reveals knowledge. But the house of the sun is Laodicean, lukewarm Christianity. It has nothing to do with the very first page of Scripture. In fact, it'll do its very best to influence you to put your ignore mode on so that you don't even think about the very first page of Scripture and then the thousands of more scriptural passages referring to the sun, moon, and stars to number your days. This happens every day. And it even affects people in the Hebrew Roots movement that have come so far that they'll dwindle this beautiful timing piece down to a two, th two to three minute window of time with the moon greeting the sun at sunrise. But the eighth month coming upon us, like the sixth month, will cause them to stumble once again. There are many witnesses with the sun, moon, and stars to allow us to number our days correctly. Dumbing the entire timing piece down is very dangerous. It is a Laodicean lazy act when people say, let's simplify it. Because those that say, oh, I've decided to simplify it. I've decided to sur supersede uh, the thoughts of Yahuwah. But these folks didn't. Daniel didn't. We know that the 2300 day count from the first month of Abib all the way to the day of Shavuot, 2300 days exist. Yes, the prophetic counts are baked in to the 365.25 solar annual count, the moon's 354 day count, and how the sun and stars working together produce 364. So the Daniel 2300 day count fits nicely into from the first day all the way to Shavuot and it helps us understand the Shemitah years. While the 1290 day count lets us understand the turning of the year from the first day of Abib all the way to the last great day, the 22nd day of the seventh month. Let alone how the 177 day count of Hanok proves that the months were always 29 and or 30 day months. But if you have a supersede, usurp approach, that you're better than the father of lights, somehow you're more special, you can change times and law, you can ignore all of this. And thus the reason why people come up with these crazy partial prophetic timelines, as regrettable as it is. So welcome to the offspring of the mother of all manis manifestation movements. Yes, the aspirations of the harlot, making sure you're not following the very first page of Scripture with the sun, moon, and stars. Yes, indeed, the sun, moon, and stars are intercalation-free. But the harlot does not want you to understand this, let alone utilize it to number your days, let alone to understand the signs that it produces, which the prophets knew very well. All of this is being ignored. To the point that most people, when you share this with them, they have a rain man moment. Now again, I'm not making fun of anyone in regards to sharing that comment because we went through it as well. We had our own very rain man moments when we went through this. Worse than that, as time went on, we had what was called cognitive dissonance 
in regards to those Rain Man moments. We were so upset that we were lied to with the Gregorian system. And by the way, how could our parents be wrong? How could they share something to us when we were little children that is so preposterous? We couldn't believe it, right? So Rain Man moments indeed ensued. And as time went on, when we learned this information even further, we started to have what's called dumb and dumber moments when cognitive dissonance moved into cognitive bias, or we started ignoring this when we knew better. Just like the cognitive bias that the moon greeting the sun at sunrise is the only witness that determines a new moon day, which is, again, a great example of cognitive bias. Again, we're coming up on the eighth month, and some folks struggled with the sixth month. They're going to run into the same challenges again on this eighth month, but we'll clear that up because Yahuwah allows us to. We are not locked and loaded to a partial prophetic view of the sun, moon, and stars. So again, we are not picking on this particular website. There are so many, like the God culture, that is still part of the house of the sun. Yes, the offspring of the harlot. Yes, the offspring of the many manifest movements that create things out of thin air. So, as we go through this, you have to ask the question, well, where does this 360-day calendar deception come from? Well, the God culture does what many do. They take the book of Bereshith or Genesis in chapter 7, verses 11, and they go into this quote, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, all the way into uh, Genesis or Bereshith, Sheath, chapter 8, verse 4, and the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. And they look at Genesis chapter 7, and the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. So they believe that that was a total 150 day time period. From the 17th day of the second month, all the way up to and including the 17th day of the seventh month is 150 days. Well, let's take a look at this because in that belief, uh, they would come to the conclusion that the months then would be 30 days for that total time period from that second month to the seventh month, which again, Jubilees chapter 5 verse 27 stated, and the waters prevailed on the face of the earth five months, 150 days. So this is where this comes from, but it's still part of the house of the sun. Well, why? Why is it still part of the harlot, Babylon the Great, an offspring of the house of the sun? Well, if you allow scripture to interpret scripture and you number your days, if you do indeed count from the 17th day of the second month in division one, and you count all the way to the 17th day of the seventh month, you get 151 days. So the math doesn't even work. It is a hoax. It's a trick into believing something that's genuine when in fact it's false. It's preposterous. Something else. The Noah count has nothing to do with a 30-day month only calendar, but rather a time of how long the water prevailed upon the earth because the count commences after the middle of the second month into the middle or just after the seventh month, which is actually 151 days, not 150 days like they claim. But at any rate, they are not five full months and or moons or months because they began in the middle of one month to the middle of another month. Furthermore, the ongoing debate hangs on the fact that the scripture teaches the ordinance of the sun, moon, and stars will not change or Yisrael, Israel, would cease to be a nation. How do we know this? Well, we go to the prophet Yermio and we allow scripture to interpret scripture so that we don't manifest things out of thin air. Again, manifesting the word is also known as the practice of thinking aspirational thoughts with the purpose of making them real. If you allow scripture to interpret scripture, you will stop manifesting aspirational thoughts. You know, those gut feelings. 
So, thus said Yahuwah, who gives the sun for a light by day and the laws of the moon and the stars for a light by night, who stirs up the sea and its waves roar. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. If these laws vanish from before me, declares Yahuwah, then the seed of Israel shall cease, also cease, from being a nation before me forever. And we know that the laws have not vanished from the sun, moon, and stars. They're intact. So again, people are trying to change times in a law. And what are those laws? Yes, the four divisions of the year with the sun, moon, and stars that are completely aligned to Moses' writings, which are completely aligned to creation's agricultural cycle, which is fully aligned to the heavens and how the sun, moon, and stars operate year after year, month after month, week after week. Yes, from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all shall come and worship me. These things have been placed in position forever. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of turning. And we share this with many folks with a 360-day mindset that regrettably had a preposterous mindset of manifestation and say, hey, look, don't do that partial prophetic timeline uh, because they weren't being a, a true historicist. They had aspirational thoughts still as they felt more special than others and that they knew and only knew themselves. And this comes from this manifestation from this verse from the prophet Yeshayahu, chapter 38, verse 8. And I quote, See, I'm bringing the shadow on the sundial, which has gone down with the sun on the sundial of Ahaz 10 degrees backward. And they stop the verse right there. And they figure in their calculations that that was it. That was the final moment. And that's when the calendar was changed to what we have today with 29 and 30 day months. Because prior there were only 30 day months. But they stop and do not read the entire verse. They do not allow scripture to interpret scripture because right after that sentence, 10 degrees backward, what did Yahuwah do? Yes, the father of lights returned the sundial, 10 degrees on the dial, by which it had gone down. How do we know this? Because in 2 Debra Hayamim uh, Chronicles, in those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death and he prayed to you and he spoke to him and appointed a sign for him. Well, what's that sign? That sign is this, the understanding of the four divisions of the year and how the sun, moon, and stars work and operate in perfect harmony together as one in those four divisions. But people find a way to add and take away, intercalate even from Scripture. And they come to these erroneous aspirations. Manifestation, if you will. So, if we look at this further... If you believe in Yeshua, then why don't they answer from the book of Yahushua, Joshua chapter 10, verses 12, 13, and I quote, Then Yahushua spoke to Yahuwah in the day when Yahuwah gave the Amorites over to the children of Israel. And he said before the eyes of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gideon, and moon in the valley of Aialion. So the sun st stood still and the moon stopped till the nation avenged itself upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Yasher? Thus the sun stopped in the midst of the heavens and did not hasten to go down for an entire day. So they don't utilize this or calculate that in relation to the Hezekiah chapter either. Remember, Yahuwah is the only one has, that has the power to intercalate. This is why he includes the 13th month on occasion to keep this whole timing piece intact. Man can't intercalate. They don't have the power. Now they can assume, they can have aspirations, they can manifest ideas out of thin air, but they're all preposterous. So again, this is the sign to us all from Yahuwah, which he has spoken forever. So again, take a look at Yirmiyahu where it says, uh, chapter 31, verse 35 through 36, if these laws, these instructions in the heavens vanish from before me, then the seed of Israel shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. And again, that's not happened and will not happen according to the promise and or promises of the restoration of all things. So, very aspirational, 
It certainly tickles the ears. People love this kind of thing, right? It's really cool. Hey, look at I'm the only one that knows this. And then when they create their partial prophetic timelines, you got to follow them. You got to believe them. And if you don't, they kick your butt. It's almost like posse prophecy time where they're it. And if you're not part of that partial prophetic timeline, you get the boot. And I've experienced it more than one time. And it's been a wonderful experience because we do not despise prophecies. We get value out of all of them. So just do a Google search, type in 360 calendar prophecies. And again, you don't have to be fearful of anyone. It just says, be aware of these false prophets because Christian history, eschatology is really corrupt. It doesn't work. There is a bigger prophetic timeline than what Christian eschatology shares. So pull this up and they all come and go one at a time. And this is why we do not despise the prophecies. The value of incorrect prophecies is immense. It shows us why people derail and it puts us in a position not to join that derailment to stay away from manifesting things out of thin air, like this 18-part series. There are so many like this. We don't judge any of these people. We value them because they did not intend originally to become self-proclaimed false prophets. They learned the hard way that Christian eschatology is out to lunch. It just doesn't work. There's a bigger timeline, and it has nothing to do with the influence from the house of the sun with the 360 day calendar deceptions and or manifest or manifesting hoaxes from people still associated in some form or manner to that house of the sun with their aspirational thoughts with the purpose of making them real. Remember, if you're just focusing on the age of man, you're missing out on the full and complete prophetic timeline which is much bigger than 99.99% of all discussion in prophecy today. So, this is the offspring of the mother of all manis- manifestation movements, and you can come out of it only with the sun, moon, and stars. Hallelujah! Yada Yahuwah, that none of us have to be opposers of the Almighty Father of Lights, Yahuwah himself, the only self-existent one. Because there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Manifestation movements work in fear. They have false expectations appearing real. They're based on emotion and gut feelings. Again, human frailty is alive and well, regrettably. The goal is to remove that human frailty that places us at times in the fear movement of manifestation. Remember, all of these movements are presumptuous. And thus why the psalmist had stated in Psalms chapter 19, verse 13, please keep your servant back from presumptuous ones. Do not let them rule over me. Yes, those ones who think they can change times and laws by not utilizing the sun, moon, and stars in total, together as one in perfect harmony. Remember, all of these manifestation movements do not delight in understanding, but only in airing their opinions. They don't utilize the sun, moon, and stars. They don't allow scripture to interpret scripture. They don't get outside to test and prove all things, and they certainly don't forecast. They buck, defy, fight, repel, resist, and do everything in their power to withstand it. But we can come out of this now, can't we? We cover this again in this video, Why Saturday is Not the Sabbath, Are You a Guardian of the Gregorian? And in further detail, the chaos of world religions with the chaos of 365, 364, 360, and 354 day calendar clubs, which is very regrettable, but they aren't going away anytime soon. Yes, this will be resolved in due process when the Messiah Yahushua fulfills the rest of the Father's will. So, intercalation free 
if you trust Yahuwah with all your heart, all your mind, all your being. So, thank you for the opportunity to share in the name which is above all names. And may our Father of Lights, Yahuwah himself, guard you and your loved ones. And may the Messiah, Yahushua, be in everything we say and do. Our next video is planned to prepare for the eighth month, which will be a total lunar eclipse. So until then, all the best to you and your loved ones in the name which is above all names.